And welcome. General Pavis Musharraf has passed away in a hospital in Dubai. The 79-year-old former Pakistan president was living in Dubai in self-exile. Now, according to reports, he was admitted in the hospital after he developed heart and blood-related complications. Pakistan ISPR has confirmed Musharraf's passing. Reports say the family of Pavis Musharraf have contacted Pakistani consulate in Dubai and in all likelihood Musharraf's remains will be brought back to Pakistan via a special plane probably tomorrow. Now, according to his family, the 79-year-old former president and chief of army staff was suffering from a rare disease. General Musharraf had left for Dubai in March 2016 for medical treatment and always wanted to return back to Pakistan but never did. He was declared a fugitive in the assassination of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. And condolences have been pouring in from Pakistan. Pakistan Prime Minister Sheba Sharif took to Twitter to offer his condolences to the family of General Pavez Musharraf. Former Minister of Information and Broadcasting of Pakistan, Fahad Chaudhry, also expressed his heartfelt condolences. So what is it? How you govern? How can you and democracy come to that? Now, what are you sectarian victimization of Sunnis in your eyes or the end? Parvez Musharraf sahab ke intakal ki khabar subha mili hai. Meri hoche bohut tabil rafaqat thi. Hamesha mujhe unne apne khandaan ka fad samjha. Aur ab tak mera unse bohut hi ahtaram ka taluk raha. Parvez Musharraf Pakistan mein kehne ki ko fauji dictator thai. Lekin un se zyada badi jamhuriyat Pakistan mein kabhi nahi thai. उन्होंने पाकिस्तान में आजाद मीडिया दिया उन्होंने पाकिस्तान के अंदर डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ ओपिनियन को प्रमोट किया उनके बाद आज का दौर जब हम उनसे कंपेयर करते हैं तो पता चलता है कि आज की जमहूरियत किस कदर बदतरीन फस्ताइत है और प्रवेश मुशर्रफ ने पाकिस्तान को कितना प्लूरिस्टिक पाकिस्तान बनाया था सो जनरल पावेस मुशर्रफ पास्ट अवे in hospital today in Dubai, the 79-year-old former Pakistan president was living in Dubai in self-exile. Now, according to reports, he was admitted in hospital after he developed heart and blood-related complications. Pakistan ISPR has confirmed Musharraf's passing. Reports say the family of Pavez Musharraf have been have contacted Pakistani consulate in Dubai and in all likelihood Musharraf's remains will be brought back to Pakistan via a special plane and that is expected to happen tomorrow. Now according to his family, <clears throat> the 79-year-old former president and chief of army staff was suffering from a rare disease. General Musharraf had left for Dubai in March 2016 for medical treatment and always wanted to return back to Pakistan but never did. He was declared a fugitive in the assassination of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto. Chief of Army Staff Ka Odha, General Ishwak Pariskani, Anas Malik is our Pakistan Bureau Chief. He's now joining us live for more updates on this developing story. Anas Malik, what's the latest at this hour? Are there more condolences? Are there more reactions following the demise of Pavis Musharraf? Well, it's one such very interesting reaction that I have is of the former or the current uh, Pakistani foreign, foreign minister, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari, who has tweeted in uh, in Roman English uh, Urdu, which says uh, uh, that uh, with regards to a mention or to Benazir Bhutto, and uh, uh, without explicitly mentioning about uh, Musharraf, he tweeted four images, and he's uh, in, uh, if I were to translate, he said, "You will always live on Benazir with a heart sign." Now, why tweet this today, or is because uh, the uh, tumultuous relation or tumultuous relation that. Uh, uh, Benazir Bhutto had with uh, the former president, General Pervez Musharraf. In fact, uh, she had nominated him 
as one of the key people in case if she is assassinated or killed. Uh, General Pradesh Musharraf was suffering from a medical complication called amyloidosis, uh, uh, which is to do, which is essentially uh, uh, that of uh, multiple organ failure. He was on an experimental drug that was stalling uh, the process, uh, the complication, but was not preventing it. And that is the reason he was under treatment in Dubai. He passed away to today uh, earlier in the morning between 8:45 a.m. and 9 a.m. Dubai time at the American Hospital in Dubai. Uh, we're seeing that the family has contacted the Pakistani consulate in Dubai uh, and expressed their desire that uh, they would want their remains to be repatriated back to uh, Pakistan. And you know, in these regards, the Pakistani state has offered uh, a special flight, a special plane that will take off tomorrow morning from the Noor Khan Air Base here in Rawalpindi, very near to where I am, and it will be heading to the Al Maktoum airport in Dubai, which the plane will then be bringing back the remains. Now, it is very interesting that it is still indecided, undecided that whether the remains will be flown here in Islamabad or to Karachi. Uh, remember, Musharraf's, uh, General Dr. Perez Musharraf's, uh, both of his parents uh, have been laid to rest in the city of Karachi, where he was, he, where he had migrated <coughs> after, uh, 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 after the partition. He was born in 1942, August, in Delhi, and he was always a Delhiite at heart, but uh, at the age of five in 1947, his family had migrated to the Pakistani city of Karachi, and he grew up over there. He went to a school called St. Patrick's High School, uh, which I'm often, uh, I'm an alumni uh, of as well. Uh, L.K. Edwani, Shokat Aziz, uh, Sir Daud Pota, uh, they were all alumni of uh, uh, the St. Patrick's High School. Uh, he took his early education from there, and then he went on to uh, uh, join the Pakistani military, where he took part in the 1965 and 1971 wars uh, as well. In, uh, he was was an SSG commando. Uh, in 1999, he was elevated to the position of the chief of, of the army staff in October. And five days later, he uh, overthrew the then government uh, of Nawaz Sharif uh, and uh, literally took over the country on the 12th of October 1999. Right. Uh, then uh, in 2001, through a referendum, which is often criticized, he took the reign of uh, uh, the presidentship of Pakistan as well, Eric. Our Pakistan Bureau Chief Anas Malik live there in Islamabad giving us details uh, of this developing story where 79-year-old former Army General and President of Pakistan Pavez Musharraf was reported dead in Dubai. And joining us now to talk more about this, thank you very much Anas Malik. Joining us now to talk more about this is Muhammad Ahmad Pansota from uh, Lahore. He's an advocate and political analyst. Muhammad, welcome to the program. Divided opinion following Pavis Musharraf's demise and legacy. In your view, how should General Musharraf be remembered? And is there anything that the current leaders can emulate from the former president? Well, uh, if I were to comment on General Pervez Musharraf's personality, I believe as a human being, he was an exceptional person. As, as an army officer, he was one of the greatest generals that we've ever had. He was a brave general. His interaction with the uh, Indian army or Indian government, be it in form of uh, his uh, position as a general or as the president, and even otherwise, he was very liked on the other side of the border as well. He was a great spokesperson. But yes, there is one aspect of his personality, which as a lawyer, as a, as, as a constitutional practitioner, I cannot support. And that is that uh, the constitution of Pakistan was abrogated, which is something I think which should not have happened. But apart from that, as a human being, as, as, a, as, as a general, as a soldier, he was a great army officer. And, and I think it's a big loss for Pakistan. But at the same time, we also need to realize that uh, from here onwards, that constitutional abrogation must come to an end because one way or the other, historically, people who've done that will not be remembered as uh, in good words, which is precisely why there is a split opinion about his personality. Mm -hmm. And had it not been for the abrogation of the constitution, I believe he would have survived uh, even, even after his death. His, his uh, reputation would have survived as one of the greatest soldiers of this country. All right. Do you think his uh, legacy will remain as positive or will it be forgotten? 
Uh, well, I think his legacy will be very, very controversial for times to come because there's a sizable portion of Pakistani politicians who, who do not approve of his uh, style of uh, governance or what essentially he did to the constitution of Pakistan, Bilawal Bhutto Zandari being one, because his mother, late mother, had nominated Jadut Wiz Musharraf in the, as one of his perpetrators in case she is assassinated. Even apart from that, one of the leading political parties, Pakistan Muslim League Noon, which is in power at the moment along in an alliance, will also not remember him in good words. As far as Imran Khan is concerned, of course, he was uh, with him when he came into power in, in, in the, in, for the first time when he got elected. But at this stage, it would be difficult for him to support the political side of General Perez Musharraf, which I believe should not have existed in the first place. His, his role was that of an army officer, which I believe he uh, performed exceptionally well till the time he had chosen to take over the constitution and Pakistan, which I believe should not have happened. So, yes, as far as your question is concerned, historically, he will be remembered as a controversial person. And maybe, maybe down the lane, he will be forgotten because history doesn't remember people who are involved in such acts as far as the constitution is concerned. But apart from that, like I said, he was an exceptional human being and a great, great general. There are critics and experts who write and also say that uh, a military man who failed to grasp dynamics of politics and diplomacy. Do you agree with them? Um, probably you can take us back to his rule. Did he... Uh, you know, show that he was a military man, but he did not really understand the politics and the diplomacy in Pakistan. Well, well, Pakistan is a country which has unfortunately been hit by military coups in the past, and which is once again, like I said, is not something to cherish. However, if I were to, if I were to say that out of those military coups, was there any military coup which had any positive effects in Pakistan, I think it would have been General Pravez Musharraf. So I do not agree with these critics because if there is one man who understood politics in and out while being a military general, it was General Pravez Musharraf. And also some of the steps which were taken by him during his tenure, such as the implementation of local government ordinance, which the political governments have been unable to do till date. And that is one of the constitutional features of Pakistan, which they are under a legal obligation to implement. Apart from that, as far as media is concerned, private media was for the first time given the autonomy to say whatever they want, to sort of uh, air whatever they want. So this is the second, I, I think, whether it is cap. And even apart from that, uh, except the part where the constitution was abrogated, he was eventually able to bring the political system back. But yes, he understood the politics of this country in and out. But once again, like I said, it, his, his uh, takeover was unnatural and which could not have been approved by anybody. Hence, uh, like all other military generals, he had to go out. Muhammad Ahmad Pansota is an advocate and political analyst. Muhammad, stay with me. Let me go back to our Pakistan Bureau Chief, Anas Malik. Uh, I've talked to several people, Anas Malik, and they say that uh, Pavis Musharraf should be remembered for his um, for strengthening the media in Pakistan and also for, you know, defending women's rights. Do you agree with some of these sentiments being told by analysts and experts? The first question, the first part of your question, I agree with because under him is when Pakistan saw this boom of the private media industry, the uh, the commencement or the establishment of uh, the Pakistan Electronic Media Regulatory Authority, which is called PEMRA uh, today, and that basically hold, gives the licenses to private TV channels. Uh, under him is when the first TV cha private TV channel, Geo News, and then subsequently ARY was launched in the country. Before that, Pakistan had only one media representation, that that was the state media, either P the PTV or the STN as we as as far as uh, as I remember so with regards to the media freedom yes he can be credited with but to the second part of your question not so much uh, unfortunately but with Musharraf's legacy has that been of a very misogynistic person in person uh, has that been of a very repressive person when it comes to women's rights he was the one uh, who had introduced the famous Hudud ordinance uh, and then it was so repressive that even people within the right 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 wing parties 
they were against it this was back in 2002 2003 uh, our honorable guest can correct me then uh, the those very controversial comments on the muhtara when the muhtara my rape case was ongoing that rape survivors uh, allege ra of rape because they would want to they would want visas for abroad and would want to settle abroad well muhtara my continues to remain in pakistan musharraf unfortunately was not in pakistan so there is it's a mixed bag it's a mixed plate uh, with regards to his contributions or his legacy um, as uh, 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 the honorable guest was pointing out uh, he's had his uh, the general uh, musharraf has had his share of problems uh, be that be the imposition of the what we believe is a martial law on the october 12 1999 or or the takeover and then the again the imposition of the emergency on the 3rd of november 2007 twice the constitution being abrogated the assassination of benazir bhutto to the bomb blast um, the assassination of akbar bukti uh, in 2005 the 2005 earthquakes uh, in which uh, 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 that was encountered by Mush general retired pervez musharraf as a challenge on his part um, the lfo the 2001 referendum uh the 2007 subsequent handover of power to uh, uh general ashraf parvez kanian stepping down as a chief of the army staff uh, uh multiple accounts on which he believed in his own words that the, that constitution is a piece of paper to be thrown in the dustbin and uh, he had done so uh by by depicting that and or by implementing that that during his time in power uh but on the on the bright side he some he had done some really good things for instance with regards to exports pa uh, the, the stability in pakistani economy you mentioned about the media freedom bit as well then uh, then uh, the the other thing is uh, is with regards to the continuation of policy uh, uh, unfortunately pakistan saw uh, a, a rise in terrorism during general parvez musharraf's era then right. his ability to engage with almost anyone his ability to answer all questions irrespective mm -hmm. of whether he liked them or not so as i said it's a pack of mixed mix plate depends on how one would want to see the glass half full or the glass half empty eric glass half full or glass half empty that is our pakistan bureau chief anas malik there muhammad listening to what anas is saying and uh, talking about terrorism and how it has affected pakistan there is the abbottabad saga where Musharraf was accused of hiding Osama bin Laden. How do you think that hurt Pakistan? Well, th th that was one of the very serious allegations on Pakistan. However, I would like to comment on the other side hmm. that how the war on terror was led. Well, to be honest, General Pervez Musharraf was pro uh, the first uh, soldier or the general who genuinely believed that to curb terrorism you have to fight against the terrorism and there was a consensus as well which was developed in in the so called national assembly that at that time existed and eventually terrorists were fought and Pakistan had to go through this war for a long period of time lost a lot of its uh, its soldiers and the country had to give away a lot so yes as far as his war on terror is concerned he he has been exceptionally dot on point his view was clear also he believed in enlightened moderation which is where uh, your previous question comes in as well as far as rights of women are concerned uh, i agree with the, uh, how, what the other gentleman was saying that these there are one or two laws which were passed in his time but at the same time for the first time this particular law was passed where a female had the right to get herself bailed out merely on the basis of being a female this is a criminal amendment which was made at this time then he was very very promoting as far as female parliamentarians were concerned he would always speak about women rights he was uh, he was quite enlightened as far as you know he would call himself enlightenedly moderate and uh, i believe that uh, there were several steps that he had taken which were not in its true sense which were not like a typical person coming from the left he he believed in modern laws he believed in the modern side of history so i believe his personality from that point of view was very modern and he has done a few things as far as women rights are concerned uh, uh, i i give you example of local government ordinance i give you example of uh, media which i already pointed out and many others he believed in merit at at his point in time the appointments which were made even the judicial appointments which were made they were all made on merit so yes there there were positive sides to his personality as well but once again if if the initial if the initial action is not legal and that being the abrogation of constitution then any action that flows from there on 
uh, will have its ramifications and consequences. Advocate and political analyst Muhammad Ahmad Pansota, thank you very much for your insights today and also thank you to our Pakistan Bureau Chief Anas Malik for talking to us as well. This coverage of the passing of former Army General and President of Pakistan, Pavez Musharraf, continues on We On World Is One. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.